guys, Effie here. Today I'm going to make this holiday card using our holiday border stamp and the coordinating die. So I'll be watercoloring this beautiful image. So I'm going to start off by rose gold heat embossing this stamp onto some Canson XL 140 pound paper. And then I'm going to ink up the stamp with some Versamark ink, which is a clear sticky embossing ink. And then I'm going to close the door of my Misty and I'm going to stamp my paper. Then I'll spoon on some of our rose gold embossing powder and hit the whole panel with my heat gun, melting all of that beautiful rose gold goodness. Now I'm going to do a little bit of wet and wet watercoloring with the poinsettia blooms on my panel and I'll be using Ken Oliver Colorverse for my painting. So I wet the blooms first with some clean water first, and then I dropped in a little bit of alizarin crimson pigment into the inner corners of the petal. Then I took a second clean brush, or rather, it, this is the first brush that I used to apply that clean water originally. So I'm just gonna take that brush and blend the alizarin crimson out to the edges of the petal. After applying that first layer of color, if I found that the color was a little too flat, I went in and added deeper concentrations of the alizarin crimson uh, color burst. So I just applied that same technique to all of the poinsettia blooms and then I went ahead and started painting the greenery using sap green color burst. Now this image is sort of busy, there's a lot going on. Um, so I kind of just did all of this very quickly, just some loose watercoloring. I didn't want to spend too much time on this card. I wanted to make a quick holiday card. So at this point, I switched over from sap green to olive green color burst because I wanted some different shades of green going on in this card. So I continued adding some of the olive green color burst to my background and I just blended that olive green out as we got towards the center of the panel so that we have a nice blend. Again, I'm not putting too much thought into this. I'm just dropping in the olive green and then blending it out as we go towards the center of the panel. Then I'm gonna color in all my brown elements such as the pine cones and some of the berry branches using a combination of sepia and burnt umber color bursts. Once I'm finished with the brown elements, I'm just going to take the tangerine color bursts and color in all the berries. There's really no right or wrong way to craft generally, and that also applies to when you're coloring. So I went with the traditional Christmas color scheme, but there are so many different color palettes that you can apply to this panel. Our design team and even our customers have done some really beautiful work with this stamp. So now my coloring is complete. Now I'm gonna take the coordinating die for this stamp. Now this die is going to cut out that inner negative space inside that border, and it's gonna leave a really, really cool effect the die really makes the stamp more versatile. So once I die cut that inner piece, I took the largest die from our Double Stitch Rectangles large die collection, and I just die cut my panel into an A2 size panel with stitching around all four edges. My plan is to stamp the sentiment inside that negative portion. So what I'm gonna do is temporarily adhere that watercolored border onto a top folding A2 base. And then I'm going to position that base into my mini Misty. And then I'm gonna position my sentiment in the center. I'm gonna close the door of the Misty and then take out that watercolored border. Then I'm gonna stamp the sentiment onto my base with some Versamark embossing ink. But before I actually stamp it onto the base, I applied some anti-static powder to ensure that we get some crisp embossing. Next, I took the base out of my Misty, spooned on our rose gold embossing powder, and I melted that powder with my heat gun. Next, I'm going to pop up that border onto the base using some dimensional foam tape. I think this is about one inch tape, so I just cut it in half and I applied it behind my border, and then I mounted that border onto my base, completing my card. I hope you guys enjoyed today's project and video. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel because I update it on a weekly basis. 
Thanks for watching, guys. I will see you next time. Bye.